Yeah. Okay, I've been playing Nightingale for like the past couple of weeks. And what I've been noticing is that there are a lot of people that are confused about the augmentation system. And um, I have a few tricks that I'm going to share when the time's right. But today, the augmentation system and crafting is the highlight and the most important part of Nightingale because you craft your own gear. Uh, my gear isn't very good right now but I've been in the middle of farming the um, tier four materials and things like that to build up to get into the vault. So the augmentation system, what I realized and what you may have realized is that some of these things will, it says uh, when, okay, so the blasting machine, right? While refining stone and powder products nearby, increase stone and powder product yield by 40% gives pickaxes damage plus plus and stamina plus plus. We can just call that plus two, I guess. So if we have this and we make picks pickaxes on the table, those pickaxes are going to have a bonus on their damage and their stamina. All of these uh, augmentations, well, the, most of them, uh, things like the anvil strictly only affects um, your craft, your, the, the material crafting. And there's some that do that, like the food. And I think there's a there's a one for weaving or something here or wood and stuff like that. It, it, it only affects the yield. Now, each um, table up to tier three, as far as I know, you can have four um, augments that affect it. So right now, my excellent workbench has this the trap, the ammo box, a cannon and the saddle. Those four are affecting it. It's just a visu visual glitch that you can't see it, but we have here, right? Um, the the cannon, the other things, and the other things here, right? All of these things affect um, the table. Now, the reason those ones do is because I'm focusing on making a bow. Um, so the cannon gives all ranged uh, weapons range damage plus three. The what else are we? Uh, uh, the unsprung trap range damage plus two. The what else is there? The ammo box. Uh, da, 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 da. Crude ammo box gives uh, range damage plus one, and then the saddle gives all ranged weapons critical damage plus one. There are no more range damage plus buffs, but when we craft our clothing, if we want it to have max range damage we're going to have this on it also. Um, if you're making pistols, you might want that, want this on there anyway. So what I did and what you should do is go through the uh, augmentation set and make a, uh, a, a document, just a word document, right? And categorize the augmentations. So like you like ranged weapons, um, put the can in there and find all of the pieces that do that. Um, all of your fishing rod, stamina stuff, <clears throat> all of the fishing things, and you can go through and do that. Now, the the important thing is, is that if they're the same tier, uh, you can only use one of them. So that is another thing. OK, so my cannon tier three, uh, the box tier one, the spring tier two, and then the saddle is tier one, but it's not a military uh, thingy. This is a separate category of augmentation, which is why we can get all four of those on the table. So if your category is the same, like the fish trophy tier one, right? All of the cooking stuff is the same. The cast iron pot, the knife, the frying pan, and I think there's a kettle or something. Yeah, the kettle. All of those are identical and you can only use one of them to buff your cooking, which is silly. The problem is, in, in the case of cooking, I am pretty sure that multiple cooking utensils will take up slots in your tier list or in your take up slots in your cooking apparatus or whatever crafting thing you're doing. So you need to make sure that you're only using one uh, augment of a specific tier on a specific thing. Now, as you'll see, um, I ended up separating my house into a couple of sections because I don't want some augmentations affecting other things. So like the construction block thing here, um, let's see, uh, it's going to affect clothing, which is why it's here. It'll affect tools and it'll affect hammers. So if this was out here, it would take a slot of the workbench and I wouldn't get the results that I'm looking for. Now, the important thing to remember here is that walls will separate the connections. 
So right now you can see that the sewing kit is getting a connection from the the weird machine over there. But uh, let's see. Let's break this and then we'll remake it. But I'm just going to... Is this going to be there, right? And once I put... Once I put that wall there, if I try and move this, you'll see that those connections don't go through the wall. So connections don't, it, it's connecting to that, that clothing rack right there. Connections don't go through walls. So no matter what, you're going to want to separate all of your, your crafting benches by walls. You're going to need a house. Um, and then any benches that can kind of double up on your materials. So like, uh, let's see here. What is, what are you using? You're using the unsprung trap, which what do you do? Let's see. Refinement time. While refining animal products at tanning stations, uh, it increases animal product yield by 40%. So that's why this is here. But since we're not near the workbench, the ranged weapon thing doesn't matter. And so you're going to have to be okay with crafting multiple copies of any given thing. So like the enchanting station, the only good one for it is a formula board. So that was one there. Uh, the diving helmet, I think that affects the, uh, the cooking station. Um, I just have it on here. The crystal ball and this... Where where are you at? There's This macabre rack are the only two things that affect the boiler. And then the formula board affects all affects all stations. So it, it counts as the third here. And so on. So for your stations, make sure you have separate rooms for different stations. And then you can keep similar ones together, like the tanning station and the textile station. Both of this one makes um, a thread and cloth. This one will make uh, straps and hide, which serve the same purpose as making um, cloth and things for us uh, uh, sewn products, right? Your clothes and things like that. That's why those two can be in the same room, but the sewing bench has to be separate. There are multiple things like that that I have set up here. So. Keep your workbenches separate and separate the them by walls so you can control what augments are affecting what uh, benches at any given time. So as I was saying about your notepad, you're going to want to go through and create a list of, um, of augments for any given thing that you're looking for. So like me, I like uh, ranged weapons and then I like the knives. So I'm going to build knives later. Um, and then when it comes time to clo for clothes, you know, we'll do something else. But um, if you like magic, I think the crystal ball, where are you at? Uh, crystal ball, uh, it gives all tools, magic uh, plus two, uh, clothing crafted. You get all of the resistances <clears throat> plus one, or I guess the, the, the bound stuff is just a resist plus one, but there's a lot of materials that give this kind of resistance, so that's probably why it's low. But fire, ice, and poison resistance are, are a pretty big deal. The funny thing is, is like we'll, we'll probably want to pay attention to ice resistance because it's any if you if you've been paying attention to the story, the ice queen is coming, so we're gonna want to pay attention to this. And I just saw that malef malef the bound resistance is plus two. The plus is just down here. So individual crafting things are easy because they're, they can only, oops, looks like I had some stuff. They can only be affected by a certain number of, um, augments. And since you're only using the highest quality augments for it, these don't really need to change once you have it set up. The important ones that the important one that's going to change is your workbench because you're going to be using different tools for different purposes. You're going to be making bows which is ranged. You're going to be making uh, melee weapons, which is melee. Um, your umbrella is here. And uh, what is it? the climbing picks? All of your different stuff here and all of them are affected by different augments. So back to that list. Once you figure out which augments you want to use um, on the uh, on the table at any one given time, you're going to want to build something like this. A storage closet full of augmentations that you can pull out at any given time and plop them next to it when you need them. That's why using your list 
it's going to make it really easy. So like you go to your, your word document or whatever, and it's, uh, where is he? Crude beehive. Say you want to make sickles, right? So you're going to use your beehive. And I think, um, gosh, I can't even remember it. Let me look at my notebook notepad here. Uh, so you can't see this, but I'm going to go to my sickles. So I need the crude beehive, uh, and then the plow or the wheelbarrow. So where's a wheelbarrow? Sickles, um, plus two. What else do I have? Those are the only two that can affect sickles. Uh, there's the wheelbarrow and the plow, which are identical. And then the, uh, simple pot. In fact, all of the pots, uh, have the same thing. I think these are all, uh, freestanding structures. Yeah. All of the pots are identical. Uh, so then there's the pot and then the beehive, which are identical. So for the sickle, there are only two augments that, that we can use the tier one and the tier two. So either the, the beehive or the plow. After that, you can use other, um, other augments to fill the last two slots. So since, um, the sickle is a melee one handed weapon, you can use the training dummy. Um, to give all melee tools critical damage and one-handed melee crafted tools critical damage plus one. So I don't know if it double dips, but at least you get, oh, critical critical damage and damage plus one. So this will increase its damage a little bit. What else we got? After this, I guess you could use the crystal ball to give the tool magic plus, but I mean, it's not really necessary. So, you know, you can just add augments to add to material add to the uh, materials of what you're doing so you make a list keep a stash of all of the augmentations and then refer to that list when you're crafting anything so you can just plop them down make your thing and call it a day and then go to all of your stations and make your stuff now if that was everything that would be the end of the video but of course it's not because there is one more thing. The cards, we all know it, it, it says uh, play this card to increase or yield, reduce the time needed to refine ore products and improve the quality of metal items at the cost of other materials effectiveness. So um, actually, now that I think about it, I need to double check something. Now, the question is, what do these bows fall under? It says gilded lumber, and I have a feeling that Let's see. Longbow, I don't want to crit. We're going to use that one, that one. Let's see, we're going to use the magnesium etched ingot and then the cut gem because there's no other, there's no other gem than we have. So I have a bow here that will, that, uh, this is under the forge. I can't rename the bow, which is too bad. I guess I'll screenshot. Well, I guess I have it on video. I'm going to make this bow <laughs> and then I'll make the short bow right after. Let's see, Mystic Shortbow. Let's see. I think for now, just raw damage will be will be better until I get different materials or whatever. So I'll just stick with this. Actually, it's just we we'll, we we'll can nope nope nope. I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I did before. I'm gonna do what I said I was going to do, and uh, I will make these bows under the lumber. Okay. So now we're gonna make the bows. Now that I think about it, I don't think I have enough line for it. Yeah, I only have enough for one. I only have enough for one, so I'm gonna ma I'm gonna remake the longbow, and uh, we'll see uh, we'll see what that looks like. Okay, longbow, mystic longbow. We'll just autofill that, and then 10% magnesium, 10%, 16%. Yeah, because it should be 18. Uh, the stats don't look too different to me from here. Range, range, range durability on the longbow. So I'm pretty sure these are the same. Mystic longbow. Actually, there's a slight difference. Um, I guess I'll have to go to the video to see which one was which. But um, I have 1372 on one and 1391 on the other. The crit is 4.4, the crit is 4.5 between the two. Uh, you know what that probably is, though? That is probably the uh, difference in the card. So like Lumber Mill here, range damage plus, speed plus, crafted tool items have crit plus, and then the Forge card. Um, forge card might have been different. Yeah. 
So I'm going to get rid of this Dauntless Shortbow at least. Because the one I have here is almost 200 damage more. Um, yeah, so I'm not I'm not sure where the difference in the two came from. Um, I'll have to go back to the video and check, but right now I don't know what that is. And I guess the other question is, which is better? Um, do we want the 0.1 crit or the, the 19 damage? Because it's almost 20 damage bonus. I'm getting injury resistance on this bow also. 2.5%. That might be a clue. Injury resistance. Okay. So this is our uh, lumber mill bow, which for some reason gave us more crit and less damage. Even though yeah, crafty tool items have crit plus. Yeah. They need to make this more clear. But for now, the difference is going to be negligible, and I can just test these out in the field later on. Although testing the uh, short bow will probably be better, but I don't have the line for it. I'll have to go back into the swamp and farm up a farm up the monster for it, but I can use these bows to do it. So that's just for the bow. <laughs> um, so swapping between the cards to get the materials and the stats that you want. Um, that's going to be a juggling act. And then I guess, you know what, if you're going to make one weapon, I suggest making multiple, um, making multiples of the uh, recipe ingredients and then trying a different card to see if you get a different um, uh, stat pool that will uh, clean it up a little bit better. Um, I guess by, by what I mean is, is like this one, do I want more damage and less crit or do I want crit uh, more crit, less damage, and some uh, some in uh, injury resistance. Movement speed is 2.6. Also, the lumber the lumber bow gives me more movement, but this is a long bow, so that might be less uh, might not be as important. So, I might want to use uh, the lumber the lumber card to make the short bow to give us more movement speed, more crit, um, because we're going for more headshots with the bow. That might be a better option, so use the lumber card for your bow. But if you make multiple um, copies of the the recipe materials, you can switch between car, uh, cards and make one on each card uh, to find the right bow for what you want to what you want to do. But um, so far, uh, it, it doesn't look like the lumber card affects the lumber like it should, and the quarry card doesn't affect the stone materials like it should. Otherwise, our cut gems might have had um, a higher a higher pool on the stats like the uh, ingots did. All right, long story short, um, the cards are, uh, are going to be the most annoying part of crafting, switching between the card to uh, make the ingredients for the bows or the weapon or the tools or the clothing that you want to to make because it's not just those weapons right well it, i guess you know what i guess we don't have to worry about swapping between cards to make our clothing which will be fine but we'll want to adjust some actually now that i think about it so for the sewing for the clothing depending on the stats that you want for those like if you want more magic on your clothing you're gonna want to take away you're gonna want to do the same thing have a little stash of augments to put in place to swap it out so like the globe where are you at uh the globe gives climbing picks gives clothing nearby speed and stamina regen uh the what is that the construction press that's the little hangman's noose thing crafted clothing have weight limit plus two so just depending on what you what kind of clothing you want to make you have to treat this the same way that you treat the uh the bench which means i need to make a closet full of clothing materials uh, of clothing augmentations but that'll make it a lot easier i can just throw some of those away or move the uh sewing kit over here and have the closet over here i don't know um but anyway that is the easiest way to craft the absolute best gear that you can if you're min maxing your stats um keep a set of um augments in a closet and make a list of what what crafts those augments affect and then pull them out when you're ready to craft that material 
So like in my case, um, I'm going to make that short bow. Um, and then um, after the short bow, I'm going to set up my uh, backpack. I'm going to get as much weight on this thing as I can. And then um, for the rest of it, I think I'm just going to go with... I think I want to make two sets of gear. One for, you know, archery and bow bowmanship. And the other using the dagger. Uh, I really liked the dagger before Re uh, the Realms reset. Uh, Realms Reborn, I think it's called. And uh, I really liked the dagger and I want to see how high we can get it. Uh, especially since it's a metal item, we can use the forge to increase its stats and stuff. So Anyway, that is the simplest way that I can explain the augmentation system. So yeah, happy crafting.